Welcome back everybody to this crimson playthrough of Final Fantasy 16. The last one we took down Bomb King and obviously uh, then increased our satchels. So I've gone and bought the potions. En route down there, notice that uh, Desiree here has something for me. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Your benefactors are a generous lot. High Cleric's Medallion. All yours. So I need 8.50 now Best to of luck out there, Sid. Let's hit the gear here. Wages of Warcraft. Yeah. The high clerics. Healing potency by, of high potions. Against potions. Hmm. Not going to do it. Let's go over to Dana Mill and do the Blacksmith Blues. People take notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. The same drapes fang is gone. The whole mother could... Okay, so you're gone. in here somewhere. What are we going to do? Calm yourself. We don't know for sure. Guessing you're probably through these doors here that were shut before. My reputation will be ruined. Ruined! Calm yourself, Lord Ignac, I beg of you, before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oath this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. Though the morning's events have left him somewhat fractious. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount of coin. Coin the innkeeper will soon be keen to collect. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes, I'm afraid it was. Then I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You are but to state it. You are welcome to anything that is within my power to grant. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not, no. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's behalf mean that I know where you might find them. The bandit's bed. Every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal is said to pass through that disreputable corner of the Valcroy. And that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence, and arrange for an audience upon your triumphant return. That will be very kind of you. Farewell, and best of luck. Okay. Where are we headed off to then? Over there. Okay. Just head out here, we'll get the chocobo. Again, it's a location where we hadn't fought the dude that was there, the notorious hunt. We could have done. It's fine.
think I need to yeah come around this corner. Wild neck. Do like that cornering it's so good. Only real place you can really do it. Okay. This mountain here. Okay. We've got company. Come on, Dad, let's tear the bastard head off. clean that was really clean better the sword's not there though this must be Ignac's luggage nothing seems to be damaged all right let's get it back to Delamel I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Wyvern. Glad to make your acquaintance. A formidable name indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redeem here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right. Speak. A master wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. It was made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins, and is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is made for that one perfect stroke and for that stroke only. They crack upon a second blow. There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. But how do they hone such an edge? <laughs> Fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. Ten thousand licks with the sharpening stone, then ten thousand more. But it is the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. A mineral quite foreign 
to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Why, when it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered, take this, together with my regards. The very stone of which I spoke, far rarer among collectors than even the blade itself, and a far more fitting payment. Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. <gasps> so it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. And there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis. Lord Byron Rosfield, and is a perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Radim, we mustn't dawdle. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. Trust Uncle back. Byron to find such an interesting rival. Now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we? Nice. Deliver the sundered whetstone. Hopefully we can get some good recipes for some weapons. There's probably more blueprints than recipes, but... Hey-ho. Sorry for the wait. But hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about our sword then? I did better than that. A slab of rock quarried on the southern continent. Its unparalleled hardness makes it perfect for sharpening blades to forge from an all manner of metals. Bronze to adamantite. Aye. A whetstone. Yes. But not one you'll find anywhere in Valestia. No wonder I couldn't get a same finish on the grinding wheel. <laughs> one hit and all done, eh? Might not be so bad if all you ever fought were duels. <laughs> good luck on the battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the Curse Breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, I could probably even make a twin of the blade that rattled me. But there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Swords that the Curse Breakers wouldn't know how to wield, probably, and that would see them through a single fire piece. Nah. No point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone is fine. Now that's something to consider. And what's finer than fallen masonry, eh? Or more hard wearing for that matter. Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy, nah. I'll make something much better. I'm sure the Curse Breakers will be delighted. Just... don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age, and I'll still be here when you're long gone. Hey. Thanks, Clive. I mean it. I owe you one, August 2. It's good to know someone's looking out for me. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. You come and find me when you've got the materials. All right. I will. 
That's complete. To 750. I think we need 850 for some more. Excalibur design draft. A diagram detailing the steps to forge a sword to rival that of a legendary king. Necessary for crafting the sword, Ex sword Excalibur. Excalibur recipe unlocked. Not of a blueprint, but. Okay, let's have a look. Clive. What do you want? Excalibur. So we need the Bomber Ember, Scarletite, Grimald or Hyde. Though modern day plays such as the adventures of Sir Crandall have taken to embellishing a tale considerably, historians do agree that long ago the nations of Valastia were, for a short time, united under a single king and his band of loyal knights. Whether or not he was in indeed crowned upon drawing a sword from the stone is a matter up for debate. Better attack, better stagger. Not bad, if I do say sure. so myself. Any reinforcements that are better? There is not. And? Does look like a good sword. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. It's not the button that I was looking for. Oh, it is the button. Okay, let's go to Martha's Rest. Look at that sword. Really good. Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here, but it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. Star Ruby, one of the three brilliant gemstones acquired and set aside by Sid for a rainy day. Otto now deems that day to have arrived and wishes to use the rubies to pay off three outstanding debts to Lady Karen, Martha of Martha's Rest and Isabella in the Vale. Let's a Star Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway is still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But I must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all? Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. <laughs> that, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Sword looks amazing. Right, need to deliver the Star Ruby to Isabella. It's North Reach. Right then, that's going to be a little bit of a cut. Not interrupted, apologies, but let's head over to Isabella. Or Isabel. No, right at the end of it, Paul. Seen her for a while, actually. Did you hear that? I say, for the size that this town is, you don't really do much I side questing. Want to see. Might change later, you never know. What am I going to 
could do without sweet water and oil of talc. My lady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Oh, my. Clive, you really have outdone yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's debt with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto later. he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> It is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago. Yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy, and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened, whether there was anything he could have done, but it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. Go will want to know the stones were delivered. If he's still with us. Right, back to the hideaway. And I think that would be the end of the side questing. Mid told me she was building a ship. You're still alive, so. Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah. Oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best. But she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me. I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. Right. Back to Karen we go then. Weird. That we have to do this. Should have just given us all three, really. Jill? Impressive, isn't it? I can't wait to see how the rest of the vessel looks. You're looking at the same thing, Jill. Oh, out of the way. Lady Karen, Goad tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Would you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? Montag, I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Ardaway's coffers, but those were donations, and you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another. And our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? 
Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. Sure. Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. <laughs> might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. A fine continental maid whose beauty is only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh... I, I, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledgers are square. Right away. I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, all because the filthy sod couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. <laughs> I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died. Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day. I was a purser on a trade ship, which is where I met him. He bought passage to, I oh, forget where. But having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my post not long after that, on account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close, promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was before fate stepped in and said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day, and there was no hiding his neck. Couldn't you and your family have? My family were the ones who summoned the constable, wanted the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him, forget what I felt. And I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could stop it from happening again and he was true to his word too left the royal army once and for all his ranks his ribbons gone just like that threw away everything he had all to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face i knew then i'd follow that man to the ends of the earth Oh. It's nice that we're getting some backstory off these side quests. He was always too clever for his own good, was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed 
was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore to myself that I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me. Just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto. I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know. This place would be fucked without you. Love you, you grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. Caliber looks this great. Bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. <laughs> but then why would he? Him or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Would you rather go where the helm? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go, Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that's... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have. For a side quest, that is a really good scene. I wasn't expecting that. We've got Sid's goblet displayed in Clive's chambers. According to Otto, Sid never once washed his goblet. Quite using it every day for both wine and small beer. I won't have it said that I'm a poor host. Right, let's take a look. We've got that we could go and see. We're not really too fast about that for the time being. Uh, there's no other side quests because they also do appear over there with him. So up next, ladies and gents, we will speak to Otto and continue on with the main story so please like comment subscribe all that good stuff it really does help me out and there'll be some more final fantasy 16 coming away shortly and i'll see you all in the next one